Hello guys, this is John, AE5X, and I'm getting, getting ready to uh, make an MDS measurement of my ICOM 705 receiver. Been wanting to do that for a while now with uh, equipment that's available easily and inexpensively to a lot of us, and one of those is the one of those pieces of equipment is the Tiny SA. Um, I think these go for around fifty dollars. I'm not really sure what they're up to now. I bought this one uh, right after they first came out. But with a tiny SA and some external attenuators and an RMS multimeter, it does have to be RMS. It'll probably say so on the case if, uh, if it is. Anyway, with those um, pieces of test equipment, you can make an MDS measurement that's quite accurate, surprisingly accurate, of a receiver in the HF frequencies for the hand bands or a shortwave receiver. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm going to talk about how to do that and demonstrate it here, and then we'll look at the result and compare that with uh, a published result for this particular um, transceiver. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, the Tiny SA, SA stands for Spectrum Analyzer, but it's also a signal generator. It has a, what is called a low output mode. It also has a high output mode, but we're not going to be using that one, just the low output. I'm going to be putting it on 14.1 megahertz, the same frequency as the receiver is currently tuned to, and then injecting a low-level signal through this external attenuation into the antenna jack. And the idea behind this whole measurement is to find out just how low of a signal we can inject that will produce a 3 dB change in audio output. 3 dB compared to the signal being there versus the signal not being there and just noise. So we're going to look at that, how weak of a signal will do that, and that's going to be the MDS. Um, the ICOM 705 and a few other receivers, especially simple receivers, QRP kits maybe that you built, may not have a speaker jack but they do have a headphone jack, and the ICOM 705 only has a headphone jack, and those are low-level audio. So, normally, I would plug the, the voltmeter into the, the headphone or the speaker jack on the receiver, but lacking a speaker jack, I've got a set of external powered speakers right here. There's one of them um, plugged into the headphone jack. And on the output of this amplified speaker, I've got a jack that's going to be a higher level of AC voltage, just a higher representation of what's available at the headphone jack. And the reason I'm doing that is because without doing it, if I just plug the meter into the audio jack of the 705, I'm going to be reading millivolts. And I'd rather see fractions of a volt or even volts rather than millivolts to see the change that I'm hoping to generate when I turn on the signal generator. So that's why I'm doing that. So you can see that the meter is plugged into the uh, the amplified speaker jack just to give me um, a higher level of voltage that I can see a difference on more easily. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now the attenuation. I've got um, a total of 70 dB here in three different attenuators. I've got a 30, a 20, and a 20. And the tiny SA will let me put in a signal of anywhere from minus 6 to minus 76 dBm. So I'm going to turn that on now, go through the little uh, setup routine. I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll connect everything up. The first thing we need to do is connect both outputs together. They're going to be outputs in our case because we're not using it as a spectrum analyzer. Connect them together, and then we're going to go to Config, Self-Test, and let it go through its, um, I think there are 12, yeah, 12 tests that it does. And they were successful. Okay, now I'm going to hook the spectrum analyzer, or the signal generator as it is now, up to the attenuators. Okay, and now I'll put this in the low output mode, mode, low out. Okay, this is where I can specify the frequency 
and the output level. So I'm set up here on 14.1 uh, megahertz. I should also mention that if you're doing this test to turn off the AGC of whatever receiver you're testing, if you can turn it off. I can't do that with the 705. I can only um, where is it? make it fast, medium, or slow. But I don't think it really matters because the AGC only kicks in with a, a large signal at the input and we're the whole definition of what we're doing is to see how small of a signal we can put in. So I don't really think that matters. The other thing you want to do is, since it's a standard, make the, uh, the bandpass filter 500 hertz <clears throat> on your receiver if you can do that. It's quite easy to do here on the, uh, on the 705, so that's what I've got dialed in. Okay, so since we're on 14.1 megahertz on the receiver, we'll put that here as well. 14.1 megahertz. And right now my output is off. I don't want an output just yet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, um, the fluke and see what my voltage is. And it's at about half a volt RMS. And I can change that by changing the volume on the... Um, you can see I'm going up to uh, 1.5, 1.6 volts. But I don't want it there, and I'll explain why in a minute. I want it at half a volt. So let me turn the volume back down. This is where an analog meter would probably be easier because I'm kind of oscillating all over the place here. But that's about half a volt. I'm going to call that 0.5 volts. And that is with no signal going into the RF input of the receiver. All right, before I turn on the signal generator, I want to dial down the level going into it. We'll go all the way down to minus 76. I'll turn that on, and there's no change in what the voltmeter is. I'm still at 0.5 volts. What I want to do at this point is adjust the output up to a higher level until I read 0.7 volts on the fluke. Why 0.7? Because to go from 0.5 to 0.7 is a 3 dB increase, and that's what I'm looking for to define the MDS. What level of RF input provides a 3 dB increase in the output at the speakers? And that will be what I call the MDS. So we're still at half a volt with uh, minus 76 going through 70 dB of attenuation. So right now I've got a 146 negative dBm going into the antenna input. So I'm gonna raise this minus 76 until I see 0.7 on the fluke. I'm gonna to try to arrange the camera so you can see both at the same time here. So I'm going to hit plus 10. Oh, plus 10, John, plus 10 over here. Okay, I'm still below, still at 0.5. I'll hit it again. Okay, I jumped to 0.8. So I'm going to come back down 1 dB at a time until I'm at 0 0.7. I'll do it 2 dB at a time. Yeah, maybe that's it. Minus 58. So minus 58 dBm going through 70 dB of attenuation provides us with minus 128 for our MDS. Let's take a look at Sherwood Engineering's analysis of the ICOM 705. He found it to have 127, and I'm getting 128. So uh, that's pretty close and pretty impressive considering the fact that he's using uh, very expensive equipment to come up with his measurements and I'm using something that probably we all have or at least can afford in our ham shacks. And you'll see he's got three readings there. Minus 127 is with the AGC off. The ICOM 705 has two AGC settings and uh, th those other values are for those. All right, so uh, let me put this back on the meter and the spectrum or 
I keep calling it a spectrum analyzer, but I'm using it as a signal generator now. Let me turn the output off, and this should go back to 0.5 or close to it. And it does. So why is going from 0.5 to 0.7 representative of 3 dB? Because the formula is output divided by input times 20 log. Um, we're probably used to multiplying by 10 log most of the time. That's for power, but for voltage, it's times 20. So uh, 0.5 times 1.4 gives us 0.7, and that 1.4 is the multiplication factor to go from uh, 3 dB, either positive or negative. So anyway, I hope that uh, makes a little bit of sense and shows you that you can do this at home. Um, probably the only thing most people would need to buy would be the external attenuators because so many people now have a, a tiny SA and most people have a, a digital multimeter and most of those do read an RMS. It's very important that it does that or that formula that I, that I just mentioned doesn't work. Uh, you'd have to use a different one. But if you do buy um, external attenuators, I would suggest getting them anywhere between 60 and 100 dB and that way the level that the tiny SA is capable of outputting will fall to within the MDS of most receivers. And uh, I would recommend buying SMA attenuators if you don't have any now instead of N type that I have here. The SMAs are much smaller and less expensive and easier to, to store somewhere. Anyway, um, hope you got something out of this 73s and thanks for watching.